If you are a landscape or background painter, you're not going to believe what I'm about to show you. In this tutorial, you'll discover some new techniques that you can use to improve your work. Quick disclaimer, this video was created in partnership with Best Buy and Wacom. As always, all opinions in this video are my own. These techniques will allow you to generate your own unique royalty-free reference images and get suggestions for how to make your work look more detailed. That's right, those days of scouring the web for reference images are coming to an end. To do this, I'll be using the Landscape Mixer Neural Filter in the latest version of Photoshop. Even if you don't have Photoshop, at least watch to see what this feature can do, because it will give you a glimpse into the future of digital art creation. I'll start by giving you a quick overview of the Landscape Mixer and how I use it to generate references and improve my artwork. Then I'll use one of my generated reference images to create a landscape painting using the Wacom Intuos Pro Medium drawing tablet. Neural filters are a product of artificial intelligence, which is still relatively new. Without getting into the technical aspects of it, neural filters like those I'll show you in this tutorial can be used to create an image by generating it rather than photographing it or illustrating it. In essence, these filters can turn image input into a completely reinterpreted image. Or in other words, AI can take what it has learned by studying millions of images and can create a picture from imagination. While the generated images tend to look somewhat artificial, I don't think we're far from generating images that are indistinguishable from real photos. Photoshop's neural filters also allow you to modify your results to add or remove features, such as season or time of day. By changing some of the properties, I can preview multiple ways to render a scene without having to commit the time to making lots of thumbnail paintings. You can even merge two images together and blend them in various ways. In time, I'm sure this technology will only get more sophisticated to the point to where we no longer have to rely on photography or Googling to get reference images. But these AI-generated images are not just a starting point. You can also use them to give you suggestions for how to improve your landscape to make it look more realistic or complex. For example, I will show you some before and after shots of quick paintings I made that I then ran through the landscape mixer. The results are something I can use as inspiration to make my painting even more detailed. Just as well, I can zoom way out and roughly paint a thumbnail of a painting to quickly compose a scene, then add instant detail by applying the filter. As you can see, there are lots of different techniques you can use with this technology, but now let's see the process in action. First, I will select an image to apply the filter to. It has to be a flattened image without layers. You can use a photograph or any of the other methods I listed earlier. I will start with a digital painting I created ahead of time. I didn't have much time to create this painting, and I could have added a lot more detail. So now I'd like to see if I can elaborate on it more using some of Photoshop's AI suggestions. While you can get some decent results from a very loosely rendered painting, it won't always work. For example, this other painting, which is too abstract and lacks enough detail for the AI to recognize clearly. While loose may be okay, it should not be confused with sloppy. If it's not a very good painting, you aren't going to get a good reference out of it. I've tried this on most of my landscapes, and it's my best work that yields the best results. In a way, the AI sort of validates your painting skills. Another factor is the image resolution. If you're applying this filter to a low resolution image, the results are not going to be as crisp as if you started with a high resolution image. Since this scene has a lot of snow, I'll apply some winter to the mountain scene. And if I do a before and after, you can see all of that wonderful detail being suggested. It's like I have someone else looking at my painting and saying, the mountain could look more detailed and here's how. But rather than describing the details in words, the AI can actually show you visually. If I want, I can create a blend of my original with the filtered version. A lower value tends to make the image look more artistic, but with less detail. A higher setting will look more like a photograph. Sometimes 1% strength is enough. The strength can also randomize the details a bit. I recommend trying a few different strength settings before committing to a look. I can even add some of the other season properties to create a unique blend. If you don't like the results you're getting, you can also try mixing your image with another image. There are some presets you can choose from, or you can link your own image. It's best to mix with an image that has some of the features in your source image. For example, you wouldn't want to mix a desert scene with a mountain lake, unless you want something really abstract. If there were a subject, like a person in my scene, I can also preserve that. But I recommend avoiding images that have anything other than standard landscape elements. Sometimes you can generate the impression of architecture, people, and animals, 
but some objects may not be recognized since this is mostly trained on landscape images. There is a reset button at the top you can use to revert your image. I'll apply some winter and save the filtered results to a new layer. And just like that, I have a reference image. But this isn't just some image off of Google search that kind of works. This image is precisely tailored to the composition I created. This is a more realistic or more detailed version of what I had produced. And this is my image. I don't have to license it or give credit to anyone. Unless I want to tweak the color or lighting, I can just start working from this. Now I'll create a painting from this reference. If you're starting from scratch, you can freestyle on a new canvas or use a sketch for more precision, whatever works for you. I want my painting to match the reference closely, so I will use a sketch to keep things aligned. However, you don't have to copy the reference exactly. I will deviate from the sketch a bit so that I'm still painting in my style. There may also be some details AI added that you don't want to keep. You can omit those changes or change them. For instance, the bottom left shoreline looks a little funky. I will need to fix that either before or during the painting process. You can also use this filter midway through your painting to get suggestions. Or you can just apply it to an old or unfinished painting and then resume working from the most recent save without starting over. As I'm sure you know, a landscape painting can take some time to complete. So I will speed up the footage a bit so you can see how I'm working. While I'm painting, I'd like to take a minute to talk about the tablet I'm using. This is the Wacom Intuos Pro Medium. It comes with the Pro Pen 2, which has over 8,000 pressure levels, and it supports pen tilt for a natural drawing experience. The express keys and touch ring make it easy to work without having to rely as much on the keyboard to activate shortcuts. Best of all, it supports other Wacom pens like the Pro Pen Slim and the Art Pen, which supports barrel rotation. Rotation really comes in handy for digital landscapes. If you're looking for a great gift idea for a young artist or hobbyist, the Intuos Pro Medium is an excellent option. It's even certified to work on Chromebooks. While it does come in a small and large size, the Medium is right in that sweet spot of not being too tiny or too bulky. And professionals will enjoy premium features like Bluetooth and multi-touch in a thin design that you can slip into a laptop bag. You can shop for the Intuos Pro on bestbuy.com using the link in the description of this video. You may even be able to pick it up curbside if you're like me and you don't want to wait for shipping. Here's my finished landscape painting. I could flatten this image and continue to apply the landscape mixer to add even more complexity, but I'm satisfied with this painting. Using AI in this way is really cool because I would not have come up with these details on my own if painting purely from imagination. Even if I had been able to locate and splice together reference images online, I would not have achieved the same result. And it certainly would have taken a lot longer. That's why I'm confident that AI is going to revolutionize how artists select reference images. I hope you enjoyed learning some new digital art techniques. If you found this video helpful, become a subscriber to get notified when I release new videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.